Hey everyone, it's Ollie Lindley here from One Number, and today we're going to take a look at filtering multiple date fields at once. This is a super useful and important concept, so if you want to follow along, the workbook is down in the description. We'll be using some HR data today to try and work out how many hires and terminations occurred within a particular year. It might sound like a pretty simple concept, right? A pretty simple example and maybe something that's fixable, but here's where we run into an issue. So our data source that we're going to use has a hire date and a termination date. So to find the number of hires and terminations, we're going to have to start working with these date fields to get us these numbers. We could try this way of working things out, right? We could try finding total hires and total terminations. So this is what I did. I just said, hey, if the hire date is the hire date, give me the payroll name, and then you just count all those names. So basically, it's counting all the names of people who are hired, and then we're going to do the same for terminations, right? Just count all the names of people who have a termination date. And if we put that onto measure, right, we create this side-by-side -side bar chart, uh, you can see, okay, these are what our numbers look like, but this is for the total running of our business, right? All the years we've been in business. So how do we filter this down to a single year of information? Aha, well, this is where the trouble comes in. Because if I filter on hire or rehire date, okay, we say years, that's fine. Maybe we choose 2020, we hit okay. What is this chart actually showing us, right? It's showing us 59 people were hired in 2020 in office and clerical. Then it claims 12 people were terminated in 2020 in office and clerical. But here's the issue. We haven't filtered on a termination date of 2020. So because we've filtered on a higher rehire date of 2020, our view is actually saying, hey, 12 people who were hired or rehired in 2020 were terminated, right, in this job class. So can you see why this gets a little bit tricky? Maybe here's another example just to demonstrate why this is a problem. Here, this is just Superstore, and we're looking at order IDs, and then we've got a date uh, of order date, right? A month, day, year of order date, and then the, the day of ship date. And so we can just see each order ID, the day it was received, the day it was shipped. And how do we filter on this, right? So we can try order date, say years, and let's choose 2022. Okay, now that looks fine, right? How many times have we done something like this? But here's the issue. If I hit a descending sort on ship date, you can see, hang on, a bunch of these orders were shipped in January of 2023. So because our filter was actually for the order date being in 2022, of course, we could ship orders outside of 2022, you know, if the ship date was different. That's almost not what's important to us in this view. So when you have these two different date fields, trying to filter that information so that it all occurs within a single year is pretty tricky. So what we're going to do is build something like this, where now we're going to use a parameter to help us shift through the years. So we can see 2021, 2022. And maybe if we just go back to 2020 quickly to reference these two, you can see 59 and 16, right? And we can see 59 hires but 12 terminations, not 16. So we can see our info is a little bit off. Let's get there. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing we're going to do is make a hires field, maybe for our particular year. So let's make hires uh, 2020. Oops, it's 202. Um, and we're going to say, if the year of hire or rehire date is equal to 2020, then uh, what do we need? Payroll name end. And now actually we just need to count this. Um, so here's a little side note. Um, when you have if statements, something that could be quite logical to do would be something like this. If year of hire or rehire date is equal to 2023, then give me a count distinct of payroll name, right? That's perfectly logical. If if you find the higher dates correct, just count the, the payroll name. However, the actual way the Tableau wants us to do this is to count the whole thing. Because this little if statement is going to work itself out at a row by row level, then we want Tableau to count all the row by row 
uh, outputs. Does that make sense? So that's why the, the aggregation always has to go outside that if statement. So there's our highest 2020, and let's make another for terminations 2020. Uh, so let's do the same thing. We're going to count distinct this. If the year of my termination date is equal to 2020, then uh, payroll name. I keep forgetting that. Okay, then payroll name. And cool. Let's hit okay. And let's pop this onto columns like that. Nice. And then let's just do this side by side bar chart. Okay, so we've got 59 and 16. That sounds about right. Uh, where's our demo? Here we go, 2020, 59 and 16. Okay, nice. So that's worked, brilliant. Um, now we need to make that dynamic. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use a parameter, right, to, to uh, put this all together. So before we finish this off, I just wanna say, if you're interested in this, uh, you know, how to use parameters to filter on multiple date fields, if you're interested in sets, LODs, if you're interested in upskilling uh, your Tableau knowledge at all, why don't you come and join us for one of our classes? We've got a load of classes coming up this summer. We'd love to see you there for one of them. So here's how this parameter is gonna work. Uh, we're gonna call this, I don't know, year, select a year. Maybe that seems too obvious, but let's just go for that. I'm gonna choose an integer and we'll say a range. I guess you could use a string, I mean, a, a list as well if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna set a range between 20 and 23 with a step size of one. And my display format, I need to get rid of my decimals and I, I don't want this thousands separator. Tableau seems to love throwing in a thousand separator for me. So I'm just gonna get rid of that and hit okay and show this parameter. Okay, here it is, and we can kind of cycle through that. Of course, it doesn't do anything right now because uh, a parameter is just a variable that needs to take the place of a constant. So let's do that. Let's crack open these hires and terminations fields, and just in place of the, uh, the hard-coded 2020, we're just gonna replace it with our parameter. So let's do that for both. Actually, we should probably edit the title as well um, so that it's not misleading. Uh, let's hit, oh, oh, terminations. Okay, whatever. We're overthinking this. Cool. And so now this parameter is linked up to both of those fields. And as we cycle through, we can see both of those fields changing. We don't have anything for 2023 because our data doesn't go that far, I guess. <laughs> that would make perfect sense. Okay, cool. Should we just fact check this? 2021, 110, and 36. That should be exactly the same as what we see over here, 110 and 36. So that's the gist of it. When you're trying to filter multiple date fields at once, try and isolate those in a measure, hook a parameter in there to alter the year or the month, you know, whatever date part you're trying to filter on, and you'll be able to get that data pertaining to just that little date part or that date value. Awesome. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, like I said, the workbook's down below if you want to, you know, fire that up and see this work. If you have any other questions about this kind of stuff, feel free to pop it in the comments below. We'll get to you as soon as we can. And I hope that you join us for one of our classes. Until the next video, keep well.